Hi, I'm Dr. Kit Weathers, and it's time for the Root Tip of the Week. But before we get started, let's reach into the top hat for the Magic Illusion of the Week. Hey, I'm Dr. Kit Weathers. Today I'm going to show you 100 card tricks. Actually, I'm going to show you one trick that allows it to look like you're doing 100 tricks. Now, what I need is a blackboard over here. As a matter of fact, that blackboard would be really nice if it could show me exactly what's happening behind my hand, sort of like that. And what we're going to do is a card trick that helps us figure out how to do 100 other card tricks. Now, if you only knew one way to reveal a card, and that was to take it off the top of the deck, but 100 ways to find it, you would only know one card trick. If I can show you one way to find a card in the deck and a hundred different ways to reveal it, you know a hundred card tricks. So let me show you one of the simplest ways to find a card there is. And this can be a legitimate choice. They can just pick any card. We'll just pop one out of the deck. They can even sign that card if you want them to. Write the name across it because it's a legitimate free choice. And what you're going to do is place it back in the deck, but we do it in a special way. We tell the person to say stop at any point, and whenever they say stop, we let them drop the card into the deck, and it's, it's fair, it's in the middle of the deck, and then we close up the deck and we say, we're going to try to find your card by looking through the deck. And so I'll cut the cards once, twice, three times, four times, and at this point, I'm going to bring the card to the top. There's your card. To learn the secret to this and other magic tricks in this series, go to endorootcamp.com. You know, people often ask why I don't reveal the entire magic trick at the same time I'm doing the video, but not everybody's interested in magic. So let's get right to the meat of the program, and I'm going to show you today how you can get your patient out of pain in five minutes or less. How can we get the patient out of pain in five minutes or less and out the door? It's 4.30 Friday afternoon. Patient walks in. They have an insurance form in one hand, a glass of ice water in the other. They've given you the diagnosis, you're going to get paid. How do you treat them? Well, I would do a D3221 at that point, but I would actually speed it up. Here's what I would do. And here you have to have a system in place for emergencies, like you need a system for everything else. Uh, you want to select your cases appropriately. I would have everything on a tray or a tub ready to go including a pre-punched rubber dam, number one endomagic file, the X-tip in order to numb them very quickly, and all the stuff out there. My goal in an emergency is to remove as much material as possible from the root canal, to clean from the crown down, which means no brooch, and I don't want to leave the tooth open. It's just a bad idea. I would not do that. So that's my goal. That's what I want to do. So the patient comes in. Since I want to get as much of the infection out as possible, the bare minimum I would do is a pulp pulpectomy or a pulpotomy, just the pulp itself. So I'd want to do that, and if that's all the time I'd got, it would take me between 30 and 60 seconds to numb it with the X-tip. It would take me another minute to make my access opening and remove the material from the pulp chamber, and in the last two or three minutes, I could go in, put a cotton pellet in, and put my temporary in place and be done. If I have a little more time I will take the number one endomagic file down into each one of the canals, or at least distal canal on a lower, uh, the palatal canal on an upper. Why do I do that? The more necrotic or irritated material I can get out of the tooth, the better the patient's going to feel. So I'll use 10 seconds, maybe 12, 15 seconds, with the rotary number one endomagic into each canal. That'll take an additional minute to do that. And then I'll put my temporary in and finish it up. Or, if I have a little more time, I might find that I can actually get all the way down the canal in that distal root on the lower, or maybe all the way down the palatal canal, so I'll do that. What if I get all the way down in all the canals? Suddenly the game changed, didn't it? I might want to try to figure out how to work that in, because if I've gotten all the way to length, how long does it take to obturate a tooth that you've cleaned out? Fifteen more minutes which includes mixing the cement, everything you want to do. 
So I might be able to see if I can scare up 15 more minutes if I get that far. And if I don't, then I'll just put temporary, but if I do, then I'm going to wind up using the best temporary filling material there is, gutta percha, with sealer all the way to the apex to do the root canal. Now you can absolutely do this in five minutes or less. Does anybody see any questions or any problems with this emergency treatment? Yes. Do you administer antibiotics? Only if they have swelling or running a temperature. We have, we've gotten so used to throwing people on antibiotics for everything, we're abusing antibiotics, I think. We're sensitizing patients. And sometimes you keep using that clindamycin, and all of a sudden it doesn't work anymore on that patient. Yeah. Formocresol pulpotomy. I would absolutely not use formocresol for pulpotomy. However, there is an exception. When I put that little cotton pellet in there and I put the temporary on top of it, that should be sterile cotton. How do you sterilize cotton and keep it sterile and get it into a tooth? I have found if you put a little form of creosol on the cotton, it sterilizes the fibers. And when you put it in the pulp chamber, not down in the canals, not only is it not going to cause pain, but if they lose their temporary filling material, it tastes so bad, they'll come right in. And, hope you, and allow you to fix it. So I don't get it wet. I'll just take the bottle of Buckley's Former Creosol, splash a little on that plastic lid, touch the cotton to it just a little bit, just moisture, so I have fumes going in there. Place that in the pulp chamber and seal it. Yes? Oh, what do I use for irrigant? Uh, depending on how far down I'm going to go, you can use anything we talked about. You could certainly use sodium hypochlorite, especially if you open it up and it smells like someone stored their sweat socks in there and it's probably severely necrotic, I would want to get that cleaned out and disinfected as much as possible. Sodium hypochlorite is great for that. You can actually even leave sodium hypochlorite in the canals during, between appointments if you want to and bring them back. And that will also sterilize the cotton. So, but it doesn't matter. Just use something. Yes? CMCP, same deal. Uh, there was a study done probably 15, 20 years ago, where they compared all the different materials you could use. CMCP, form, form of creosol, iodine, potassium iodide, all the different choices that were out there. And the control was a sterile cotton pellet. It didn't make any difference. As a matter of fact, the sterile cotton actually came out slightly better than anything else that they tried. So if you can get sterile cotton in the tooth, that's really all you need. I put stuff on it to sterilize it. Well, that's it for another Root Tip of the Week. I'm Dr. Kit Weathers inviting you to join me at our very next Root Camp. So long for now.